What's up? Wouldn't it be cool if you could watch one beach volleyball tutorial video on YouTube and that one video would actually make you better at serve receive, better at setting, better at hitting, better at blocking, better at defending, make you move quicker in the court, jump higher, and also have better endurance so you don't get worn out during those long rallies. And yes, that is the tutorial video I'm gonna to create today. But before you run away, because you think it sounds way too good to be true, I'm gonna explain why this is not the case. So in all of these different parts in beach volleyball, serve, receive, and hitting, and jumping, and being quick and whatnot, the common thing between them, or one of the common things between them, is that you use muscles. You use the very muscles that you have in your body that you have been using all of your life. But I'm gonna say that most probably you don't know how to use these very muscles in the most efficient way. Because beach volleyball is a sport where we need to be both quick and explosive as well as very precise. And most of us actually use our muscles in sort of a clumsy way where we are both making ourselves tired when we try to be quick and explosive without being as quick as expo and explosive as we could be but also the clumsiness takes away some of this preciseness and we need to be precise when we serve receive and make sure the ball should go where it's go or, or set or whatnot. There's also going to be some of you watching this video that have a memory of a past volleyball memory where you did something that you usually don't do. You jumped super high and hit super hard and it was crazy and it felt like you didn't use any power to do it and it almost feels sort of magical but you cannot replicate that feeling that you once had. Well, this theory is hopefully gonna help us uncover the mysticism around that a little bit and maybe help you have that feeling more times in the future. Okay, so let's get stuck. Basically, we have muscle groups. So here's my, here's my overarm. Here's my triceps, no, here's my biceps and here's my triceps. And they work with each other and against each other. I'm gonna do a picture here. So here's my hand, do, do, do. Underarm, overarm, ah, I'm not a painter here, but this is my biceps and here's my triceps. Uh, I hope that makes sense. We can take that away. Uh, basically, these two muscles are working against each other in to get or together. So when I move my arm like this, my biceps is working more than my triceps. And when I work it down, my triceps is working more than my biceps. And we're talking about quickness. We're talking about quickness and overall usage of energy. So let's say that I'm gonna be quick now. I'm gonna do this movement quickly. And I might do something like, like that. Uh, which might mean that my bicep is uh, engaging to 70%. It's doing 70% of its maximum power. But my tricep is also sort of trying to protect my body, protect my elbow and whatnot, my tendons, so that it doesn't get injured. So my tricep also works 30% to just to stop the movement or, or slow down the movement a little bit. Okay, so here in this case we have, we have bicep, we have tricep, we have 70 and we have 30, which means total, Total uh, energy usage is 70 plus 30. I don't know exactly if you can do the math like this. I'm not a physician, but let's say you can say it like that. So total usage is 100, but the actual speed of the arm becomes 70 minus 30, which is 40. So we're using 100 units of power to generate 40 in speed. Now, what if I do a movement like this? <sighs> uh, what happened there was I still had more power in my biceps than my tricep because my arm was moving this way inwards towards my body. But I used a lot of force and power in both of the muscles. Maybe I used 80% of my bicep potential and maybe I used 
60% of my transit potential. You see where this is going. This is going 80, 60, which means total uh, 140 and speed 20. Uh, a much more inefficient way to move my arm. So what's then the thing? The thing is that I believe most people believe that when they're moving their muscles, they're doing this. They're doing 100% here and 0% there, which is ultimate efficiency. That's the quickest you could ever be. But I don't believe that's true. I believe reality is something more like this 7030 one. I don't know the exact numbers, I haven't measured those, but I actually believe that most people have vastly, <laughs> they don't know how to use this like it should. So what if we could learn, I don't believe we can learn to 100 zero, but what if we could learn 80, 10? Well, that makes 80 here, 10 here, uh, total energy 90 and speed oh, 70. So compared to the first one, we have almost double speed and we're using less total energy. We're using 90% or we're using 90 total rather than 100. And this is why some people have these once in a lifetime spikes where they feel like, oh shit, I didn't use any power at all compared to what I normally use. But the ball traveled way faster, <laughs> went way, uh, way steeper down and whatnot. And then they're just baffled. So how then are we gonna learn to use our muscles like this? I'm gonna explain to you in a second, but first I need to actually show something that I think most people don't even believe in this before they have tried it. So I think, <laughs> here's the range, here's the known range, and here's the, let's say this is the actual range of what your muscles can do. So your known range, this, this first one that I showed you, which looks like something like, like that, is, is known to you. That's what, how you feel you are doing the quickest movement. This is also known to you. So these are like the extremes of what you know. And everything you haven't experienced, you don't know what it's like. But here's the thing. You can, with your mind, you can go from here to there. You can decide, I'm going to do this bicep movement, and you can decide to do it in two different ways. So what if you try to decide to go further this way than you have ever been before? But it's not necessarily by being stronger in the bicep. It's actually by being weaker, more relaxed in the tricep. So myself, I would say that this range here, the, the, the hyper quick range, since I realized and understood this theory, I've been sort of exploring it more and more and more and gotten better and better at it. And basically how you do it is um, you want to be relaxed, completely relaxed, uh, very like floppy in your arm so that the tricep really doesn't work at all. And then <laughs> it's almost like you want to visualize electric signals going from your brain to the bicep, sending like this is gonna fire away while you're still relaxed with the tricep. Um, as I said, I think this is not natural for your body to do because of it wants to protect itself. And sometimes when I do this, I actually sort of hurt my elbow. I'm gonna suffer now, hopefully for the last time on video for you guys. <laughs> sometimes I've done this live and I always regret it. Uh, but I'll, I'll show you one more last time. Uh, it's, it looks almost like stupid. Let's see if I can move this. Move this camera a little bit bigger. So I'm gonna try to slap myself as hard as possible by being floppy and just... Actually, this time it didn't hurt me. But I think you can see that it's sort of significantly more explosive and quick than what I was doing before which many people think is the quickest that their body can produce. And obviously using your tricep like that has nothing to do with being good in beach volleyball. But actually what I found is that once your body sort of realizes how to do this with one muscle,
then it sort of can translate the feeling into other muscles as well. I myself, I actually found this uh, last year when I started playing disc golf, frisbee golf. And I just one day like realized how to actually throw my hand way faster than I had been able to before because of this relaxed feeling and only contracting the muscles that needed to be contracted. And then from that, I was able to translate into beach volleyball, into jumping, into running, into hitting the ball, into, into whatnot. So I actually just want you to learn this with one muscle and then you will be able to translate it to other places in your body too. Okay, so here's sort of the game plan. Uh, if you didn't know, you're watching Learn Beach Ball Fast, a YouTube channel that's going to hopefully change the world of how this sport is taught in the future. And you have now understood sort of this, this concept. You, you have not, maybe not yet tried it, you have maybe not um, felt it, like actually believe, believe in it. But um, this one concept we are going to, over time in this YouTube channel, spread to different parts. Serve, receive, setting, hitting, jumping, moving, whatnot. Uh, and we're not going to do all of this today because that would be a, a several hour long video. But today, now you know the concept and I'm going to teach you one way to use the concept, which I believe is the easiest way for you to learn to use this concept and it will help with your game straight away. And it will also help you use this concept later in the other tutorial videos that I will create. Okay, so the part where I actually want you to, to learn this at first is a very simple part of beach volleyball. It is if you are a full-time blocker when you're running from the service line to the net after you have served. And yes, I know everybody is not a full-time blocker, but anyway, I want you to, next time you play, experiment a little bit with it or you practice or whatever. Try this out and learn this concept here because it's very easy. So here's a video of how most people do when they are a full-time blocker and they run. They run with these sort of, I don't know, fast running steps like normal people do. And here's how I do it. Uh, I know it looks kind of funny. It looks a little bit like I'm, I don't know, out on the field somewhere running um, happy summer, sunny summer day or something. But actually what is happening here is that I'm running, I'm taking big efficient strides. I'm getting far, I'm getting further per stride than with the normal running technique. And my legs and my body is relaxed. I don't use the unnecessary muscles more than I need to. And I'm actually visualizing electric signals going from my brain to the exact muscles that need to fire for every, each and every step. And the result is that I need to take, I don't know, three, four, five steps to get from the service line to the net. And the recovery time is very quick because I'm, I'm simply not exhausting my muscles. I can't really explain it. You need to try it. You need to just try to run like this in the sand and feel how easy it becomes. Mostly this, this gave me better endurance in the game. I used to just sort of <laughs> fall together from exhaustion sometimes. If I was a full-time blocker and I got served and I had to hit all the time and the sand was deep, uh, there was one tournament where I just, I just gave up. I couldn't do it anymore because my leg muscles were just too tired. And once I realized this concept here, uh, I haven't had that problem anymore. Okay, so as I said before, I'm not a physician and I don't study this kind of stuff. And this is actually sort of a homemade theory. So I just wanted to be honest with that and say that, yeah, there's no, there's no research. I've kind of made this up myself. But what I have read is, is a, Russian, Rus a Russian research that said they had studied and they had come to the conclusion that, okay, here's bicep, here's tricep. They had come to the conclusion that the most explosive athletes on a timeline from here's contraction started and here's contraction ended, uh, bicep is working all the way and the tricep is working a little bit before it relaxes. And they had found out that the most explosive athletes were quicker at relaxing the antagonist muscle, the, the triceps in, in this example. Uh, so there is some research behind this. And also, <clears throat> if there's any meditators out there, uh, 
which uh, I'll talk more about some in some sports psychology video. But some sorts of meditation, you actually sort of sit and get more aware of a body part of yours. So for example, if you just now uh, put, put your hand away and I want you to feel what it feels like on this part of your hand. And don't look at it. You probably can't feel too much of what's there. But once you try, you actually feel a little bit of something, a little bit of air, a little bit of hotness or coldness or, or a gust of wind or something that you weren't aware of before. And what happens in your brain when you do this exercise over and over and over again is that the, <laughs> the connections between your brain and this part of your hand, they get stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger. And it becomes easier and easier and easier for you to feel this part of your hand. I believe that the more times we use our muscles, we use one muscle and relax the other one, more and more and more and more, our body gets better and better and better and better at doing this. So I do think that the first time you go to the court, you try to uh, be a full-time blocker, run in the sand like this, uh, it's immediately gonna be sort of a small aha moment, hopefully. But actually over time, I think your body will get even more efficient at doing this. Cool, I hope that makes sense. I'll not go into too many more details uh, because I don't wanna make this video very super long. If there's some questions, write them in the comments and, and I'll see them there uh, if I miss something. And in the future, we will apply this, this theory into a lot more parts of the beach volleyball game. This running to the block is just the easiest way I've found to, to actually learn this in a game situation. Okay, so maybe hopefully after you try this out, you will realize that hmm, there's a guy on YouTube, this learn beach volleyball fast guy. He's talking about these weird theories that nobody else is talking about. And hmm, they're actually teaching me more about beach volleyball than any of my coaches or trainers do. Hopefully that will happen. When that day happens, you click the subscribe button on this YouTube channel because we are going to learn to use these secrets in every single part of our game later. Uh, so click the subscribe button for that to make sure you don't miss out on those. Uh, actually, you know, this channel, I want it to grow as fast as possible because the faster this channel grows, the faster I can help you guys with all these tips and tricks. I, the faster I can create these videos, and, and everything, the better I can make the videos and so on and so on. For this, you should share this video to your friends that are also learning the sport. Uh, because, well, it's gonna be more fun to practice these things with your friends and it's gonna help us all together. Also, uh, I have a Facebook group with, uh, it's like an in-depth version of this YouTube channel. We have some discussions there and it's gonna be be better, it's gonna, there's gonna be content that you cannot find on the YouTube channel and so on and so on. The link is in, in the description below, you should join that. And of course, there's a like button on, under this video, why not click that, that helps me too. And write some comments. Uh, the more engagement there is on this video, the easier it will be for people, other people to find it because YouTube will like it better and, and whatnot. So yeah, let's do everything to make this grow and we can together become as good as possible. See you later.